Hey, welcome to Menstrual Matters, the show about all things menstrual. I am Carly Graptis, and this episode is going to be just me. Today, I want to talk about a great book I just read called Pussy, a Reclamation by Regina Thomas Hauer. I'll start by saying you have to read this book. <laughs> it's amazing. If, if the word pussy makes you uncomfortable, then you have to read this book. If it doesn't, then you have to read this book. If you have a pussy, you need to read this book. If you don't have a pussy, I think you need to read this book. It is a powerful book with a great, great message, and I loved every second of it. It was a very fast read only because I was reading it all the time. She, she goes through some steps to finding the power that is uh, in, <laughs> in or part of our pussy and, and how to use that for the good of all and especially for the good of us. So how to, how to find it, how to tap into that, and then how to use it, which is pretty amazing, pretty powerful. Lately, I've found that the books I really enjoy, the ones that really click with me, are the ones where I actually feel like a better person after, like I've grown somehow, and this one is a thousand percent that. <laughs> it is... It is really great. I feel great about being a woman. I feel great tapping into my pussy wisdom, even though I am by no means an expert yet. Um, I, I feel better about being a woman in this time. It's still not easy, but I do feel better. And I think it's just because of the the connection that she makes with each one of us, that we're all connected and that feels really good. And, you know, just knowing that we're all in this together and we can all help each other feels so good. One, uh, one particular part of the book that I wanted to talk about today is a section that she, where she talks about women relating, how we relate to one another and the conversations that we have so Mama Gina, which is what she's, she's called at, she does have a school in New York and that's what she calls herself. Um, she points out that our relationships with each other are usually based on the negative, which is interesting once I started thinking of it. I definitely have that tendency. We will talk about all the bad things and all the negative things that are, you know, has happened in the week before we met up. Um, and the, the deep down idea or the reason for this is that we don't feel comfortable talking about the good things because we don't want the other person to feel bad about themselves. We don't want them to feel bad around us which is truly kind of caring and, you know, at least we have that awareness. And I think it's definitely something we do on a subconscious, unconscious level, because I wouldn't say that I do this because I don't want you to feel bad. I don't know if I would have put that together, but it definitely happens. I definitely have relationships where that is a thing. Do you find yourself doing this? Is this something that Right now, as you think about it, you can think about people where you kind of dull your shine. Um, for some reason, well, for the reason I just said, I guess, um, instead of talking about all the things that go well, that make us feel good, that we're proud of, we, we dull ourselves and end our lives so that the person with us doesn't feel bad. Uh, I 
for some reason, the first example I could think of when I read this was on Instagram. I follow a hashtag called period positive. And this name is very misleading. There is nothing positive about it. It is a bitch fest. Um, it's basically finding others to wallow in that pain. The pain of periods and our menstrual cycles. Now, I do understand that finding other people that are going through the same shit as you feels good. Of course, I, I need that too. I need to know that I'm normal, <laughs> that I'm okay, and that I can get through this. And seeing other people with the same problems helps with that. The important part is how long you stay there, how long you stay in that negative place. So this is a pain and a suffering that can be lessened and decreased. You don't have to live with period pains, with menstrual problems, but as long as you stay in the victimhood and you know, cling to these jokes about, about the pain and about the, you know, needing the heating pad and everything like that, there, you're not gonna get better. And I do think that, I found that women don't know that they can get better. And they, oh, hey, Franklin. <laughs> they, um, sorry, now I lost it. Right, women don't know that they can feel better. And I think sometimes I'm kind of looked at like, I am a charlatan for saying that you can feel better. Anyways, our strength as women doesn't come from bringing each other down or bringing ourselves down. It comes from the opposite. It comes from lifting ourselves and ones, people around us up higher than we even know possible. So back to the book, one exercise she actually talks about is about bragging. And I find this very interesting because I think even the word for myself makes me uncomfortable. Um, I've always, you know, I don't know, at least me as a young girl, I was told or maybe not told specifically about me because I don't think I ever was a bragger, but you know, the other, I had a neighbor that my parents thought was braggy and bossy and that was seen as negative. I, yeah, my friends would say the same things. So you just kind of pick up on that, like girls aren't supposed to brag. So I love that she uses this word and I love that it's a thing that comes out. And um, so the, the exercise is to think of two or three brags about yourself each day and say them out loud. And if you can, say them with another person too. And have them brag back to you. Have their brags ready so that you can just lift each other up and just feel the lightness that comes with that. So some examples I have written down, they're just quick, they're little. I was really calm and positive with that person today, even though they weren't that way with me. Now that's actually kind of a big deal because it's really hard to stay in that calm, patient, listening place when someone's laying it on you pretty good. So that one's pretty powerful and I definitely think that's a good brag. This isn't something that happened to me. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. It's something I want to be good at. I really love my voice. I love the way my butt looks in these jeans. Simple things, of course, why not? Why can't we love our bodies? Why can't we brag about our bodies? This is something that women aren't, haven't been allowed to do. We're kind of shut down, you know, having that um, confidence is kind of seen as a bad thing, which is so sad. So let's love ourselves, let's love each other. Instead of dulling ourselves and our lives to those around us, 
let's promise right here and right now that we each shine. We shine the brightest that we can. And let others know that they can do that around us too. And that can just be by shining ourselves. You don't have to have any words around it. Just be the beautiful self that you are in all your interactions. Yeah. And you'll notice that it, it just happens naturally back to you. So bring the brilliance and the love and the light that you are into each conversation, each interaction and connection. Just bring those higher, higher energetic states with you. And this, what this will do is it'll change not only the vibration around us, which will then energetically change the vibration of the people around us, but it also grows and it becomes global. It becomes bigger and there's more love out there for everybody. And I just think that's so beautiful. It's so simple and huge at the same time. So some, here's something to do today. Number one, notice how you interact with those around you um, and see what, what version of yourself do you bring to each conversation or to each interaction. And just notice, no judgment. It's all about observation. The more shame or negativity we feel about something, the more likely we're, we're going to give up on ever trying to be better or different. Maybe a better word. I, I definitely find that with myself. Especially in this situation, I've noticed that I don't bring my best self to conversations sometimes. And there are specific places where I'm worse. And sometimes that gets me really upset and I feel really bad. And it just is a, it's like a hill. It just keeps going down. There's nothing that can bring me out except just not feeling shame about it, really. And just letting it happen and learning and growing. So notice the interactions. Number two, work on bringing your, your biggest and best self, your highest self, into all your relationships and see how that goes. So this would be, you know, working on these brags. Maybe that's a great place to start because then you'll have it ready and see how the conversation goes from there. I think that'd be a really interesting thing to watch. <laughs> now I do want to clarify it because right now it may seem like I am telling you to be positive when you're feeling low and crappy. And that's, that's the exact opposite. I think when you're feeling shitty, you need, to be in that and you need to feel it and be with it and be okay with it and work through it until it's gone. And if you have friends that you feel confident enough that can help you through that or that just want to be with you while you're like that, that's awesome. If you have that trust, perfect. Be with them when you're like that. My point is that when you're feeling positive, don't dull yourself to be negative, I guess. Um, if, you're, if you're really feeling yourself today, then let it shine. Let yourself shine because that's, that's what we need more of in the world right now, for sure. We need more of you being yourselves, being your best selves, more of all of us being our best selves. A quote that I found in this book that I just really gravitated towards and loved is um, what I'm going to finish this um, episode with. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just say <laughs> I don't really know what to say about it. So I choose to inhabit my radiance rather than my doubt. To me, that's very powerful. I love, the words are so powerful in it and they make me feel really good. I have a very good connection with them. Uh, choose 
choose is so great because it is empowering. It gives us a choice. And I love that so much. Inhabit, I don't use that word very much, but it's, I've been using this word so much lately today, uh, powerful, but I guess that's one takeaway from this book because it's very powerful. Radiance, again, one of those high vibing words that just feels so good. And doubt, oh Lord, I have doubt. So this is just a good reminder every day. I choose to inhabit my radiance rather than my doubt. I just think that's so beautiful. So that's my, my spiel for today. That's the episode. Thank you so much for listening and sticking around. I hope you have gained something from this. I am so grateful that you are here. Um, if I am Carly Graftis, I am a certified holistic nutrition consultant, and I work with women who do have hormonal, period, menstrual cycle issues. So if you want to learn more about me, my website is veganholisticnutrition.com. You can also get a hold of me through here. You can message me. You can email me at info, sorry, info at veganholisticnutrition.com. And have, have a wonderful day. Bye.